what size is a fungus? It's an interesting question. And um, the first answer maybe that comes to your mind is, you know, when thinking of the, on the stuff on, on your pizza, it's like the thing on the pizza. But that thing on the pizza is not the fungus. That's just the fruiting body. And the real fungus in the soil, it's uh, much, much bigger and gives rise to many of these fruiting bodies. So the fruiting body alone is, is not the answer. So the answer really is also asking the question, or relates to the question, what is a fungal individual really? And therefore, what is its size? And now it turns out that question, what is a fungal individual, um, doesn't have a unique answer. It's a bit confusing. And it's a bit confusing because we're talking about organisms that are very, very much dissimilar from, from our experience and what we are. So you and I and your cat and your dog, they are what's called unitary organisms. So they are organisms that follow a particularly, you know, laid out, strict um, set of instructions for making this organism. Like you have one head, you have two arms, you have two feet, and it's pretty much predetermined. That's a unitary organism. In that case, it's super easy to say what the individual is. It's this thing like, that stands in front of you right now. Um, but for uh, modular organisms, which is the other kind of organisms, it's totally different because um, there um, you can either mean with individual, that individual little module, or you can mean that entire thing that, um, that basically all that uh, genetically identical, identical material that came out of one spore or one zygote. And depending if you, if you mean one or the other, your answer completely changes. If you mean the module, then your answer is something microscopic. So a fungus is, a, is, is microscopic in size because it's basically a hypha tip with an average amount of downstream hypha length. It's a mathematical construct, but basically it's, it's something microscopic. And it makes sense because, you know, fungi are dealt with by, by microbiologists. And uh, that also makes sense. Um, taking aside yeasts, which are unicellular, and here we're talking about really filamentous fungi. So that's one part of the answer. The other part of the answer is if you look at the entire genetic individual, the clone, if you will, and there your answer completely changes. And so in 1992, in a paper, people have for the very first time, and I mean 1992, not 1892, for the first time measured the size, the age, um, and the weight of one fungal individual, in the sense of the genetic individual, in the natural environment. And what came out? Well, is huge. So um, according to genetic um, examinations of fruiting bodies that basically delineated this clone, that individual in the genetic sense was 1,500 years old, uh, 60,000 square meters large and weighed 10 tons. Wow. And of course, that is super impressive, but keep in mind, this is just one of the possible views of a fungal individual. In this case, it would be a very large thing. And so for fungi, what is an individual becomes even more complicated because um, fungi can have in the very same tube, in the same little bit of cytoplasm, two or even more different, genetically different nuclei. So basically sets of instructions that, uh, that are slightly different. Just imagine that, that there would be like two different nuclei in every one of your cells with a specific set of instructions. It'd be crazy to think about it. But fungi deal with that in an extended basis, at least several groups of fungi do. And this uh, state of having multiple nuclei in the same cytoplasm is called heterokaryosis. So heterokaryosis, if you have that kind of fungus, it means <laughs> the individual is probably that nucleus, most likely. But it gets even more confusing because when hyphae fuse, and mind you, that doesn't occur like just willy-nilly, and but it, it, it obeys certain rules. Uh, but when hyphae fuse, then they exchange not just these nuclei, potentially leading to these heterokaryons, which is mentioned, but also they exchange other information. For example, organelles that also carry um, genetic information or mycoviruses, which may be good or bad for that fungus, that also are genetic material. So then you can see in basically in one a bit of the cytoplasm or one tube of the fungus, you, you can have quite a mixture of um, basically identities. 
And it's actually pretty fabulous how fungi can function and function really well, even given that kind of um, messy genetics, if you will. So that was a simple question, how big is a fungus? But actually uh, the answer, as you can see, went quite deep into the very nature of what fungi are all about. And I hopefully, hopefully you think about that next time you eat that, um, that mushroom on your pizza.